Now this is a NES knockoff. More specifically, this is a NES knockoff that I bought off of Wish.com while trying not to be scammed on that website. Now while it's a decent retro gaming experience, uh, uh, oh. oh, nice. It's not amazing, especially considering the fact that they lie about the amount of ROMs that they have on here. So what I decided to do was make an even better retro gaming console using a first generation Apple TV. And here we have the very patriotic American post box thing. It just screams America. Now let's cut open this bad boy and see what it looks like inside. And then I'm gonna accidentally knife myself. Ooh, I hope I didn't cut it there. Wow, this is pretty crazy. You can already tell that it's very well packaged. <laughs> it's just like bits of very clearly Apple cable. This is the most obvious Apple cable ever. It's even got that like matte feeling that all of their cables have. But let's just kind of like get this out here. So I'm guessing this is the Apple TV. Again, it, it does need to be, oh, and they shipped an old HDMI cable with it. But this is what we're excited about. So this is the first generation Apple TV. Oh wow, it's actually, oof, immediately drop it. It's actually huge, look at that thing. Not 100% sure if it's actually gonna work though, but it still looks pretty good. Looking at it here, I don't know how I'm gonna open this up. I think you kinda just pull this rubber bit off. Come on! But we'll get to that in a bit. Um, I'll try and not break it before I've even used it. As far as rear I.O. goes, it's actually not too bad. So it's got an RCA output and it's also got a component output. And then it does have HDMI, which is what I'm gonna use. And then Ethernet, so we can't plug it into the internet. And an optical output. And then it's also got a USB port. Now let's try and actually open up this bad boy. Now, you have to peel this rubber base off and it oh and then you destroy it in the way that I, this is such a terrible process come on uh, i'm so uh, look at all that glue that they use why is that necessary Do, well actually the reason this is necessary is because when the hard drive fails, you have to buy a new one. You can't just do this to it because it f this feels so unbelievably unconsensual. Come on! Ah, oh, oh, shit. Okay, that, that's what I didn't want to happen. I'm not gonna be able to replace this rubber. Okay, there we go, finally. There we go, that is pretty exciting. Let's unplug this. This is the motherboard and under here is a one gigahertz Pentium M CPU. Um, so it is an Intel CPU and that's actually one of the reasons why this version of the Apple TV, the first gen, is the only one that you can install Linux on because um, the generation two and after that all have like the, the Apple A series CPUs which are like ARM based mobile CPUs. Uh, well, not CPUs, they're more like systems on a chip. I assume the CPUs under here, it's also got a GPU, which is a 7300 Go, it's an NVIDIA based GPU. Uh, this is actually the power supply. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to get this off though, let me. So the fan is actually mounted with these little rubber posts and you're supposed to kind of compress them and get them through the hole. I can't do that, like for some reason it's, it's not working. Like when I compress it, it doesn't, get it small enough to go through the hole. I don't want to irreparably damage the actual mounting system here um, because I do still need to use this to make a video. Let's try and install Linux on this and turn it into a retro gaming console. And here it is. Look, this is Linux running on an Apple TV. Okay. To be more specific, it's OSMC, which is a Linux distribution based on Debian. Now, if this doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry, because honestly, it doesn't mean anything to me either. I don't know anything about Linux. 
Now, as you can see, this doesn't look like a retro console yet. This is basically just a Linux based media player at this point. So what I'm going to have to do is do some stuff to it to actually install a kind of desktop environment. Now, there's a fairly long and complicated process involved with actually getting this kind of desktop environment running on an Apple TV. Um, and I'm not going to break it down in this video because it's just going to make it too long and it's not really the point, right? So if you do want to go through this process yourself, I'll link a video in the description below for you to try it out. Although I would not recommend doing it because it's a huge pain in the butt to do. And now we're in the position where we can finally turn this into a retro gaming console to compete with the Wish thing. Now before we get into this, I just want to do a quick disclaimer about what I'm about to do here. ROMs are bad, okay? Don't do ROMs. They hurt Nintendo's feelings. And I'm pretty sure that Nintendo executives regularly wake up screaming because they had a ROM-based nightmare. So now with that out of the way, you have to install an emulator on the, the Apple TV. And once you've done that, the emulator that I decided to use is a, is a SNES based emulator. And this is actually the most recent emulator that the Apple TV can run. Even when running Super Mario World on here, you're hitting like 95% usage on the, on the Apple TV. So you can't do like a PlayStation 1 emulator or something like that. I was kind of hoping for that, uh, but then that would make both Sony and Nintendo sad. And that's just too much sadness to go around <laughs> to go around. And here we have the emulator running on the first generation Apple TV. Now I know that we only have four games here as opposed to the 310 or so on the Wish console, but you can download more of them. There's like an infinite amount on the internet. Although, remember, ROMs are bad, okay? Naughty ROMs. Anyway, let's get into playing some, some SNES games. And again, these are SNES games as opposed to NES games. Although, in my opinion, the graphics are essentially identical. Now, we played uh, Contra 1 on the NES console thing. So let's try Contra 3. Wow, that's very loud. And the sound effects as well. There's something just so pleasing about- Oh no, they all died! I'm guessing he's the baddie. In Windows, you have a hotkey that you can do this with, I just want to say. Oh wow, this is actually, this is, like the control layout is really bad. Oh, I'm so bad. I've already, oh, oh no, it's already game over. <clears throat> now again, I just want to say that I can't get the actual, um, like, Logitech controller that I bought to work. Because of whatever reason, I don't know what it is. Um... I tried everything. There are like various, various kind of like fixes on the internet. Oh yeah, this is the like super easy, just destroys everything for you weapon. Uh, let's just do Super Mario World actually. But yeah, so look at that. We've got the console experience running on a little Apple TV, which I think is honestly quite exciting. Player one. Now. Is there supposed to graphically be a difference between the NES and the SNES? Like, am I just useless for not being able to tell? This is probably driving the 100% completionists of you crazy that I'm not doing that properly. Oh, I'm still shooty, man. You go all going to- oh wow, look at that. We've actually got a frame drop in Mario. <laughs> It shows you how beastly the system is. Yoshi! Yay! I'm actually really excited about the fact that this worked, especially because Apple is famous for having a stranglehold on like outside compatibility in their products. And I think it's quite cool that you can get a retro games emulator running on a first gen Apple TV. Whether or not there's actual like genuine application to this, I wouldn't recommend that anyone do this. It's a huge amount of effort and uh, there's very little support on the internet. Honestly, I think if you do want to have a retro gaming experience in your living room, a retro pie is a way better way to go about it because there's a lot more support on the internet. <laughs> Honestly, with this project, like there's not a lot of help out there. Oh yeah, and also ROMs are bad.
<laughs> and with that, please share this video with your friends to show them the Apple TV ridiculousness. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow my Instagram and my Twitter page. And yeah, yeah, I think, I think until the next video, bye-bye.